So uh, both Bitcoin and Ethereum realized vol spiking back into the 50s this week, uh, as we saw that short sell off on Monday of about 6% apiece on two major assets, uh, a, a decent amount of liquidations in the order of magnitude of $400 million getting liquidated um, as Senator Warren introduces this kind of anti-crypto bill to crack down on the illegal use of crypto. Um, implied vols did pop back up. Uh, nothing too dramatic, I would say, uh, but you can see Bitcoin kind of drifting lower throughout the week and then popped back up to its highs of last week in terms of short dated implieds. Um, that, that spike in realized vol in that, in that yellow line has taken carry to zero. Um, now, Ethereum vol ended a little bit higher than, than those peaks that it made last week. So Ethereum vol is actually trading stronger. Uh, and realized vol is a bit higher there as well. Uh, and once again, carry gone slightly negative because of that big spike in realized vol. Um, now, if we do stay above 38K in Bitcoin, then this correction is likely to be healthy. And we reckon vol probably mean reverts over the coming weeks if spot can kind of stay here or grind its way back up. Um, so, you know, th there may be an opportunity there to sell short dated vol and earn a bit of carry if you, if you are brave enough. Um, and also using this drop to underwrite and sell puts against any underweight positions. Like let's say you rode that crypto rally up and then got out of some of it waiting for a pullback. Well, a nice way to kind of get back into it is to sell puts on a pullback at a strike that you, you think is a really strong support, like 38K, for example. So selling like the 38K puts to Jan now is probably not a bad trade if you're happy to own Bitcoin at 3,800 by end of Jan because you'll get the ETF approval by then. So, so that's the sort of way you could take advantage of the pop in vol, pop in downside vol and, and over, uh, underwrite against it basically. Okay, <clears throat> that's what we're seeing in Realize. Looking at the term structure, uh, we did see a little pop in Bitcoin front end, but it's already faded to be honest. So this little move up and then back down again. Um, this is like as of midnight last night, these moves. Um, whereas, you know, the changes are actually actually kind of as of this morning. So we can see on the week, we're pretty unchanged on the front curve now. It's actually the back end that is down. So the gamma buckets out to sort of end of December were quite flat on the week, as, as we have had some decent realized. But the Vega buckets kind of January onwards are down anywhere between two and four vols, with February 24 actually being the worst hit down four vols. Now, Ethereum is a slightly different picture. You've got the gamma buckets up about three vols. Uh, because Ethereum is outperforming from a realized perspective. Um, the rest of the curve is kind of flattish. So you're seeing up roughly half a vol across most expiries, except for that one expiry that stands out as February, which is better offered. Okay. So it's just, I think it's just because February became listed. And, and if you think about it, if you, the, the, the pricing of that is going to be a function of where it is in relation to the ETF approvals. And so, the kind of the event premium that the end of Jan was holding was is partly because um, early Jan is when the approvals are. So when February gets listed on the curve, no one really wants February. They could use it as a bit of a funding leg against owning January. So, so it makes sense from an event vol perspective that people would rather own the January bucket and, and offload some Vega on the February bucket because that doesn't contain the event, right? Well, it contains the event, but it's not as close in proximity of time to the event, right? So there's less there's less reason to want to hold it, okay? So it's like creating a bit of a kink in the curve around January by letting that February drop. So that's what's going on there. Uh, okay, so anyway, that long end vol um, firm in Ethereum, uh, and once again, outperforming Bitcoin long dated vol as we've been expecting and we've been flagging over the last couple of weeks, right? Thinking that the story is shifting over to Ethereum. So looking at the relative value, uh, the ETH Bitcoin vol spread shifting higher uh, by about sort of two to three vol points. Um, that's taking it to about four to five vols across the entire curve. The realize is slightly above that um, at around six. So it's kind of trading or getting towards um, where realized is. You can see here on the chart, um, we are trading you know, near the top end of the range uh, going back for going back to the summer. So Ethereum definitely coming back into the spotlight, people thinking that vol is worth owning. Um, now the drop yesterday did kind of show us that Ethereum can catch a bit of beta to the downside. So Ethereum was down more than Bitcoin yesterday, um, intraday. 
So it's kind of remind, reminding us that Ethereum, whilst it might have a narrative on the upside now with, with e ETFs, it can also, if crypto markets break down, it can also move as well. So that kind of gives you more rationale to want to own vol in Ethereum because it's shown its hand that it can move in both directions. And don't forget, right, we're at five vols right now. This stuff used to trade 10 or 15 vols above Bitcoin consistently. So it's just been, a, this year has been the anomaly because all of the story has been in Bitcoin and ETH has kind of been, you know, been on the, been sidelined. But if, if that's changing now, then there's no reason why ETH vol can't continue to richen up, especially if the realize justifies it, right? And we're kind of seeing that. One last thing to note is the ETH Bitcoin spot, uh, the cross rate. It did, once again, retest supports, bounce strongly off them uh, and, and has started to retrace a little bit. But again, continues to hold that strong support zone. Um, that, that is what makes me generally a little bit more bullish on Ethereum. And even if that support zone broke, it might be a case of, OK, the whole crypto market selling off and Ethereum's got a high beta to the downside. So, again, the vol side of things, owning some ETH vol, we don't think looks too bad here. OK. Um, so that's relative value. Looking at SKU, quite a big repricing in SKU this week. We saw uh, it move back to basically neutral on the one month and the, and the weekly stuff go, actually went into put premium up here. Um, the three month stuff is still in marginal call premium and the long dates are definitely in call premium. So you've, you've got a bit of a difference in term structure where short dated SKU is flipped over to puts, but long, long end is still persisting in calls. Um, now, we had seen that shorter dated call skew flattening last week, which was signaling to us that the crypto market probably needs to pause a bit. Now, we did push a bit higher in, in the near term on that, but then we have reversed since then. So, you know, it's not a perfect signal. It's just kind of showing you a little bit what the hedging activity is and what the speculation is and if people are taking profit on calls and things like that. The fact that people were taking profit on calls meant they were getting a little bit less bullish in the near term. And then as we started to break down and, and we got that news flow, puts suddenly caught a bid and then you saw that skew completely flip into puts. But that short end skew can often show, give you a little bit of a lead on what might happen. Um, the fact that the long, long end skew is still in calls does suggest that the crypto market is saying that this is a healthy correction in a very strong uptrend. And there's so much upside potential next year still. Um, and that's the tail. That is the, the right tail risk is what we perceive to be the real material tail on crypto for next year. But in the short term, because we are undergoing a technical correction, there may well still be some further weakness down towards that key support zone of 38K. Now, um, Ethereum, interestingly, Ethereum call skew is slightly higher than Bitcoin call skew in the long end. So that to me is evidence that the market sees potential for Ethereum to steal the limelight at some point next year after the approvals, the ETF approvals are out of the way for Bitcoin. It's going to be all about Ethereum. And that is the story that's going to gain traction. And the options market is already starting to price that by having a higher call skew in Ethereum than it has in Bitcoin. And that, that is the subtle, that is a subtle little bit of surface pricing that is, is kind of showing, showing us what the option traders think on uh, in crypto on the relative side all right and then um as we already mentioned you know using this spike in short dated vol but also in short, in short dated skew flipping into puts gives you an opportunity to underwrite i.e sell puts if you want to buy the dip in crypto and you think it might still dip a little bit more you don't mind earning a bit of premium over the holidays but if you get delivered some bitcoin down at 38k ready for january you're quite happy with that if that is if that is your opinion and that is how you feel about bitcoin then selling those puts is actually quite a nice trade right it's called a cash covered put sale you'd make sure you got enough margin enough cash to cover it if you did go down there so you didn't get liquidated that's why sizing is important we've seen what can happen when liquidations cascade we've literally that's what the six that's what the 10 percent drop was a bunch of liquidations on on long futures but you don't want to get liquidating your option position. So you've got to size it wisely and understand what you're doing. OK, uh, all right. That is uh, my little summary then of SKU. Uh, you can see we're pretty neutral. We're, we were a little bit elevated on vol, but spot spot down here now is looking pretty neutral. So it's not a clear strategy. Compass isn't really screaming anything at us right now. Um, as we said, the carry went to zero as well. Uh, and Ethereum is telling the same story. So, so there's nothing really standing out. I mean, looking at the shape of the curve in Ethereum, 
arguably, if you didn't think we we're going to get a big break higher in Ethereum uh, between now and year end, which I personally don't, then um, call calendars look okay. Um, you can basically earn a bit of theta via selling maybe some December calls that are maybe 5% higher than where we are now. And you buy some Jan or March calls against them. And that will earn a little bit of theta. And if we grind higher, that will do even better if we don't go through your front strike. Um, that, that's nice. one nice way of earning some premium. Another way is selling strangles, selling iron condors, things like that. But like I say, taking advantage of a flat term structure on ETH uh, would, would kind of push me towards a call calendar potentially. Okay, uh, that is the kind of vol side of stuff. Looking at flows now. So volume spiking pretty aggressively, 68% up in Bitcoin options, up to about $10 billion notional on Deribit. Um, first, we saw profit taking in calls. So we saw December calls, 40K, 42K strikes getting sold. Uh, then once things settled down a bit, we also uh, saw straddles getting sold on the 44K strike. And we saw some buying 45K calls outright. Um, January, we saw buyers of call spreads in the 42, 50K strikes. Um, and some outright call selling on that 50k strike. So you see on the um, on the paradigm take a flow, uh, the largest volume by far was this sell uh, happening on the 50k strikes, and that was kind of December, January, and and even March options getting sold. Okay, so people were happy to offload the 50k strike as the market was breaking to the downside. They felt more comfortable letting that go, basically. Um, and then in terms of after, I mean, this, this is only up to 8th of December. So since the weekend, since we had that sell off on Monday, we've seen a bunch of put protection coming in, uh, 40K puts getting bought in December, end of December. And the end of this week, we also saw some put spread buying 41K, 37K strikes. So that's what we're seeing. And that kind of helped the put skew catch a bit of a bid on the super short dated side of things. Okay. Looking at flow. On Ethereum, uh, also spiking, but up about 30% to 3.3 billion. So not no, no wait, about a third of the notional volume that we saw on Bitcoin. Um, we saw buyers of vol, though, like we said, that the front of the curve was quite well bid on Ethereum. Uh, what did we see? We saw December's getting bought in that 24 to 2600 area. We continued to see that March call getting rolled into June and the higher strikes are rolling up and out of March calls. That's been an ongoing theme for the last couple of weeks. Um, and then the breakdown in spot also brought some put spread buying. We had the 15th of December, 2100, 1900 put spread bought. And we had the week after the 22nd of December, 2800 put spread bought as well. Uh, and in terms of the, so you can see here, lots of buy volume on the upside from 24 uh, 24 and higher. Uh, and then we saw some local selling in the 22 and 2300 area. So that's that continuous sort of gamma supply that you still get. But the buying, the buying overwhelmed that, which is why vols were actually up on the week still. All right, that, that's your flows in Ethereum. If we look at uh, gamma positioning, so continuing to see um, Bitcoin gamma positioning getting shorter and shorter. So we had a spike lower, then a little bounce, and now we're back at the lows of gamma positioning for the last month or so. Um, so what does that mean? Well, we look at the strikes, the 40K and the 42K strikes are quite big strikes for the 15th and for the 29th of December. So we've, we've definitely got dealers short gamma around here. They own a little bit of upside above 45, 45K. They own a bit of downside uh, below that 38K area. So it's kind of like they've got a, they've got a condor on where they short the local and long the wings. Um, but right now, the headline gamma on that is quite short, which means it gives a bit of potential for some choppiness if if you do get headlines in crypto. And we obviously had seen some choppiness on Monday. Uh, Ethereum's got a different story. I mean, it flipped to long gamma, but it has drifted back down towards neutral, but it is still small long. Uh, you can see it's a bit more balanced in terms of positioning. So we do have some short strikes locally here. We've got quite big long strikes around it as well. And they're, they're all parked in December, end of December. So, yeah, and there's also a long strike here for this week as well around around local 2200 strikes. So that's kind of counterbalancing some of the shorts. Uh, and that's keeping Ethereum dealers relatively short, uh, relatively flat right now. Um, so in theory, that means Ethereum shouldn't be expected to move as much as Bitcoin. But on Monday, it moved more than Bitcoin. So it what well, that says to me 
is bigger forces are at play than the options market, right? If, if there's not a lot going on, then yes, the options market can definitely skew things and, and kind of have quite a big impact. But when you get when you get big news flow, like we saw, that kind of catches the market a bit off guard, then everything can move. It doesn't really matter what the gamma position is. Okay, so that's one thing you need to be aware of. You can't you can't always hang your hat on the gamma positioning because other forces can overwhelm that if if there's a big enough reason to. And it seemed like this week there was a bit of a bit of a reason. Okay, that's the summary for this week in crypto. Thanks a lot. As always, I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>